Oh, good old Canada. Nothing beats drinking a gallon of maple syrup for breakfast and going out to pick your roots in the cold winter snow, right? I'm kidding, of course, but if it isn't obvious by now, Canada is much more than maple syrup, moves to snow, ice hockey, and all about their accent, eh? Canada's history consists of France and the UK playing tic-tac-toe, the UK beating France in tic-tac-toe, and control was given to the UK fully, not so much in the late 19th century, and until the late 20th century did Canada have full independence. Whoosh, that's a lot. We, of course, cannot forget about Canada's neighbor, the USA in which they had bad relations and wars, but now they have good relations. No more chit chat, let's get right into the history. Alright, alright. First we start with the 16th century, New France. As you can tell by the name, it was led by France. France was pretty big, it basically owned the central part of what is now known as the USA. Not only that, but most of the Northeast too. Parts that I'm pretty sure are now known as Ontario, Quebec, and some other provinces in Northeast Canada. I don't know, I'm not good with Canadian provinces. So anyways, as you can see from this, France has some good colonizing. But France wasn't the only country colonizing the shit out of North America. It was basically most of Europe, some notable ones being France, the UK, and Spain. So anyways, as you can see in this image, the red is the UK, which hasn't taken up all of Canada yet. And the fact the UK has barely even affected Canada, just Newfoundland, and barely anything else. Nope, UK still did some good colonizing in America, so that's cool. Why am I calling it Canada? It's New France. Anyways, the UK and France had many battles and other things happening, like the French Indian War and the Great Up Up He of All. The Great Up He of All. That's how I'm gonna pronounce it. The Great Upheaval started in 1755 and ended in 1764. Oh boy, I'm gonna pronounce everything wrong in this. What happened during the Great Upheaval, you might be asking? Well, the British got rid of the Acadian people. Uh, wait, 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 you might be saying, who the hell are these Acadian people? Well, my good friend, they are the descendants of the French, who had their own places in New France called Acadia which is now known as modern-day Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, Prince Edward Island, and another Maine. Anyways, let's continue. So the British kicked out the Acadians out of their own colony in, in 1763. France gave up power to the UK, who beat the shit out of them in the Seven Years' War. In 1763, we now have the province of Quebec. The province of Quebec was nothing, just some random British province. Some notable things are that they're a little interesting, I guess is when they mess around in the U.S. Oh yeah, in a time when they manifest the shit out of their destiny and managed to make Canada pretty big. That there is now an Upper Canada and Lower Canada. It was course territory in the U.S., but America took that land back not too long later. So anyways, 1791, there's the Upper and Lower Canada. That's cool. It's 1803, and Napoleon told Thomas Jefferson, You want that big boy part that borders the U.S.? Jefferson said, hell yeah, boy, that land is looking good tonight. And that's the Louisiana Purchase in a nutshell. Nothing to do with Canada, just wanted to point out as it was part of New France. So basically, there was this whole entire revolution happening in the U.S., pushing a bunch of settlers and refugees to move to Canada. Hey, isn't Canada still a colony of the U.K.? Yeah, and isn't the U.K. like our enemy? Yep, we should go to war with them. Sounds good to me. The War of 1812 can be its own video, <clears throat> coming out soon. But what you have to know is that Canada, whom is a colony of the United Kingdom, whom is the enemy of the U.S., decided to go to war, and Canada did the appropriate thing when a country is invading you, and it's to burn down where the president lives, the White House specifically. 1815, the war ended. Also, Canada is doing some epic trading with lumber and stuff. Epic trading. Wow, a billionaire in 1837 at the Niagara River. That will last long. Hey, it's the Act of New Union. <laughs> Union. What is that do, you might be asking? Well, the British were thinking, what if we made Upper Canada and Lower Canada conjoin, making one big boy Canada? And so that was put into place. So now we got a big boy North American colony. That's cool. Oh, would you look at that? It's 1867 and Canada wants independence. So the British North America Act is approved by the UK. Now Canada is independent, kinda. You see, the UK made it so Canada would be a dominion. Minions. Bananas. Ah! 
like Australia and New Zealand. You can tell with the flag. Not much happened until in 1931, the statue of West... No. The statue... <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce this, but... The statue of Westminster was made official. Well, you might be saying, what the heck is that? Well, according to this article, the statue of Westminster gave Canada and the other Commonwealth dom dominions a banana <clears throat> leg legislative equality with Britain. So that's cool, I guess. You know what else is cool? Full independence. And that's what Canada got in 1982.